all together. You see, the prophet's assignment before God is to be a messenger of the word of God to the people. That's where his ministry is. That's where his service is. But you see, the prophet also has a special favor with God. Where he can be allowed to inquire things of his God and gain insight into those things. Anything. Are we together? And so the people can actually meet the prophet of God and say, we know that this is not part of your primary assignment. But we acknowledge that you are a prophet of the Almighty. So we want to entreat you to ask God concerning the chicken I have in my house that got missing because he is the only one that can reveal the secret of how this chicken got missing. And we know that you are a prophet of Yah. So only you can inquire on our behalf. That operation there is not part of the prophet's responsibility. Because what's the responsibility? To be a messenger of God to the people. Now what these people are asking for is for this prophet to consult God on their behalf. But you see the prophet has a special favor with God that allows him to inquire of the Lord concerning anything he wants. And God can reveal it unto his servant, the prophet. Are we together? That does not mean the things he inquire of the Lord is part of his assignment before God. Do you understand? So this prophet cannot look at you and say, Ah, okay, I'll, 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 I'll talk to God. Come back tomorrow, but for this stress, give me two pieces of silver. You see, God will not be angry because he collected two pieces of silver. I'm going to show you the prophetic business today. The two pieces of silver I collected from you has nothing to do with the assignment God has given him to you people. He then goes to God and says, Oh God, after prayer, say, God, there's this person that met me about his chicken that got missing. Would you show me what happened concerning that case? And God reveals the secret to him. And he comes back tomorrow and tells you that, Oh, your neighbor is actually the one who took your chicken. And he took it around 2 p.m. And you get excited and say, Thank you, prophet, for this admonition. You have saved me a, a, a great deal of stress. In God's eyes, the human honored his prophet, blessed his prophet, and the prophet blessed the human. The prophet can receive that information and choose not to tell you. God will not hold him and say, why did I show it to you and you didn't tell anybody? That is not part of his what? Assignment. That's not his job description. His job description is to stand before God receive the message of God and bring it to the people. But God can allow him inquire. And whatever he chooses to do with that information, it's left to his discretion. Are we together? Now look at the problem here. A prophet, after seeing that this ministry of inquiry for people you know, inquires of his God. See, it will amaze you the things that God is willing to show his prophets. It will amaze you. So he is inquiring of God on behalf of this person, on behalf of that person, and God is showing him some of these things. The others, God may choose to keep quiet about it. And he's making gold. And it becomes a custom. People now say, okay, if you are going to be the prophet of God, just hold something, you know, for the, for the troubles you are causing him to inquire, you need to have something to gift to him. He becomes a norm. So everyone goes there uh, uh, armed with their two pieces of silver. It becomes something that the Lord allows his servant to do and benefit from, even as he represents him to the people. It becomes because actually you cannot put a price tag, follow me carefully, you cannot put a price tag on the word of God. So they are not paying him for the word. They are paying him for the trouble of giving them this. Follow me carefully. Don't allow religion blind you now. This step well. Yeah. So, he can now continue doing that. But the danger is that if he's not careful, that will become his new primary assignment. 
Because standing as a prophet to deliver the word of God may not have any profit with it. Because if you look at the history of our ancestors who were prophets in scriptures that delivered the word of God to the people of God, most of them were killed on account of what they said. They were stoned. They were exiled. They were rejected. You see, the fact that God is speaking doesn't mean human beings will receive it. Don't be deceived to think that if I say, thus is the Lord, it means everyone will embrace me. No, 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 no. Most of the times, the word of God is always sent to a generation that is wicked towards God. However, when it comes to matters of inquiring of God on behalf of the people, this has a personal sentiment to it. So people are willing to do anything they can just to get their problems met. Their needs met and their problems settled. So the prophet would have much traffic around that area of his ministry. Now this ministry is something that he generated on account of mutual gain. Okay, I gain something, you gain something from me. This has nothing to do with his core assignment. But now if he's not careful, this trivial ministry that he built for himself among the people would become his core, his new core assignment. And so instead of being a messenger of God because he has bounded with the people, he has benefited from their gold, it may now begin to affect his responsibility to tell the people the word of God. So guess what? He may not stop prophesying, but God will stop sending messages through him. So listen, the difference between a prophet and one who operates with a familiar spirit is not inability to see the future because one with a familiar spirit can actually give divinations about the future, can actually give predictions about the future, can actually give revelation about a man's past, can say true things about a man's present circumstances. That is not what separates a prophet of God from one who is operating with the spirit of divination. The only thing that separates these two people from each other is that one receives messages directly from God to the people and the other doesn't. If it comes to service to the people, even the one with the familiar spirit can serve for the benefit of the people. The same way one who is a prophet of God can also serve for the benefit of what? Of the people. The one with the familiar spirit can inquire of this familiar spirit concerning the supposed future of a person the same way a prophet can inquire of his God concerning the future of a person. Are we together? The only difference is that the word of the Lord comes to one or the word of the Lord doesn't come to the other. One is recognized before God as his messenger whenever he wants to talk to the people. The other is not. So if you are not careful to help the people know the defining factor between these two persons, you will discover that one who is operating with a familiar spirit can be mistaken to be a prophet of God because he has supernatural signs of insight with him. Although there is a possibility for me to inquire of the Lord now, and tell you to give me money for that inquiry. And God will not meet me. I'm telling you. He will not meet me and tell me, why did you collect money to make inquiries for that person? He has no business with that operation. He gave his prophet an information. The prophet chooses to do with the information whatever he seems fit to do with it. But guess what? I've received a command from my own master, who is Yeshua Mashiach, who told me that because the things he's going to be given to me are received freely without me paying anything, I should also not charge anyone anything to give those things out. This is a command I've received from my master. Now, because I do not pay him to reveal things to me, I should not take a charge from anyone to give them revelations. Are we together? Did he not give us the command? He said, freely have ye received, freely what? When he was commissioning people that will represent him. 
He made sure we understood that our services should be done from a place of charity. You cannot tell people you came to give them freedom and yet you are charging them. If you came to bring freedom, then that freedom should come from a place of freedom. So he takes the task, the tax, the sacrifices, the pain, the burdens for everything that his prophets, his nabis would receive. And then he gives us a command. Although I know that you can inquire of me and I will show you my teachings, and you can go out and use this information to provide a pause for yourself. He said, because of me, do not provide a pause for yourself. I can actually use this information to provide a pause for myself. To secure my future. To be named with, with the greats in that ministry. But he said, do not provide a pause for yourself. He said, freely you've received. Freely also give it out to the people. So guess what? If I ever choose to inquire of the Lord on your matter, on your case, the Lord expects me to be servant enough to him not to request anything for you from you in return. The Lord expects me to be servant enough to him not to request anything from you in, in return. Even though I can provide a pause for myself. Are we together? So in Christianity, we are not just representative of God. We are also obedient to the commandments of the Lord. Not because we cannot wield powers within our prophetic service unto the people that can help us secure a bag for ourselves. And we don't want to find out what will begin to happen with our ministry when we go against this command of our Lord and now begin to exploit the loophole that we have in the spirit that many may not know. And that loophole is that if you find favor with God, there are many things he will show to you that he will not show to the normal man. There are many offers he will give to you that he will not give. He can, in fact, he can tell you that. Forget about these people. They've offended me. Let me start something new with you. And the people would not know about this because you've, you, you've found favor with God. So he said to them, he said, provide not pause for yourselves. Freely you've received, freely give. If that command was not given by the Lord, I would never criticize a prophet for charging money to inquire of the Lord on behalf of people because I know how the prophetic code works. I would only cry against a true prophet who would come and tell people, the Lord has sent me. But to hear what the Lord has said, bring a thousand dollars. Because he's going against the laws that govern the prophetic as touching the messenger ministry of God. And guess what? God doesn't just have only one messenger. Are we together? Yes. But because the Lord has commanded us, he said, do not provide a pause for yourself when you go in my name to serve me before the people. He said, because you've received these things freely, freely also give these things to the people. Only taking whatever they present to you. So don't charge them. Even if you're a gospel musician, take only what is what presented to you. If you go there to represent me, the corruption is everywhere, sir. From prophets to pastors to gospel musicians, everybody is providing something that secures their own destiny. Uh, God, uh, we thank you for the grace, but just in case you may not be there to help us when these people begin to reject us, let me have some money for myself first. There are many secrets I know in the spirit by the mercy of God. Hey! 
that I can open a private prophetic group. And those people, I only tell them the deepest secrets of how and what is going to be happening around the world. Hey. 